Good morning. God bless your heart. Real good greetings, everyone. Once again, this is the servant of Jesus Christ, Robert Dunlap, coming on to you one more time to bring you the gospel to God. No. Come and tell you what Jesus said. And all of you to go to heaven, and all of you to be saved. We come and tell you what Jesus said. All right. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is alive right now. God the Father sent his Son Jesus into the world for this purpose. To die for your sin. To take away your sin. To cleanse you from your sin. By his blood that was shed on the cross. And God raised Jesus up from the dead. And he's alive right now. And sat on the right hand of the Father. All right. Let's go right the way. <coughs> We're glad to be here. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. We got to do it. We got to do it. Not for no fanfare, hoopla. Not for no popularity. Hallelujah. You got your back. God, you. You know when you preach the gospel, you don't get popular. You know that, right? You may get it, but you be hated. Uh -huh. By the world. Now, when Jesus spoke about the world, uh, knowing who he referenced. The scribe, Pharisee, hypocrite, chief priest, Jew, his people. AKA church. <laughs> <laughs> Those in the church, in our churches. That's who we read when we talk about the world. Say the world hates you, they gonna hate me, they gonna hate you. <laughs> he wasn't talking about nobody that, that wasn't, hallelujah, going to what we call church. He was talking about those that go to what we call church. And all that sin in Moses' seat. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Those that said they were righteous, yet they killed you. All right, let's go right away. I need you to get your Bible. Hallelujah. Get your Bible. <clears throat> and go to, hallelujah, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 6, begin with verse 39. The book of Luke chapter 6, begin with verse uh, 39. Nine. And Jesus spake a parable unto them. You know, let me give you my let me give you my let me give you my, my my subject before I get started. My subject today is how can you accept Christ as your personal savior, but you do not accept his words? Or how can you accept Christ as your personal savior? but you refuse to do what your personal Savior told you to do. How can you accept Christ as your personal Savior, but you deny his words? You deny what he's saying, yet you say you accept him as your personal Savior. All right. Luke chapter 39. I mean, chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the, now this is the answer to this. This is why you can do that. And Jesus spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall not, shall they not both fall in the ditch? That's why you make statements like that. I accept Christ my person to save you. But I don't do what he tell me to do. I don't do what he tell me to do. I accept Christ my personal Savior, but I reject everything he tell me to do. 
because you got a blind leader and you blind. Your pastor blind, your bishop blind, your apostle blind. I accept Christ my person and Savior, but ain't no other without sin. I accept Christ my person and Savior, but ain't nobody perfect. Because you are you got a blind leader and you blind. And you blind because you're not looking into the light. You blind because you're not following Christ. Your personal savior. You deny Christ, not God today. Your personal savior. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, then will I deny you. If you deny me in my words, we better get that God know. We better get that. <clears throat> and he's paying a parable out to them. Can blind lead the blind? Shall not they both fall to death? The disciple is not above his master. But everyone that is. But. <laughs> But everyone, this is Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. You're going to be just like Jesus. You're going to be just like God. Because Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Yeah. See, see, I, see, I, 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 see, I'm just not seeing this. The disciple is not above his master. I said, Jesus Christ, my perfect Savior. Yet you say nobody perfect. The disciple is not above his master. Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master, Jesus said. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. No, you won't be master. You will be as your master. And you know Christ is your master. Did not Christ say call no man? Mm-hmm. I, I, I <coughs> let let go let go the way. Praise God. Oh, let's see, let's see. Call no man master. Sorry, uh -uh. you want to call? You know, Google got to say what well, I got to do. What I tell you to do. Call no man master. That's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 8 through 12. Be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. Whoo! Not back to Luke 6 and 40. The disciple is not above his master. I'm a disciple of Jesus. It, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. But you say you ain't perfect. You say ain't nobody perfect. You're not a disciple. That was Luke chapter 6, verse 40. I said, Did Christ my person say, yet you don't do what he say do? Actually, you teach against what he said. All right. Blind leads are the blind. If ye deny me and my words before men. I, here it is. Mark. Chapter 8. Verse. Thirty eight, Mark eight, thirty-eight. I'm a I'm a servant of Jesus Christ.
Well, you teach you teach because you teach to get bishop, you teach to get pastor. I'm not their servant. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Mark 8:38. Look what Jesus said. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words. And my words. And you sure ashamed of Jesus would. Cause you say ain't nobody puppy. But Jesus said be puppy. Mm -hmm. Mark 8 38. Whosoever, therefore, Jesus said, shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous silver for generation. You can't be ashamed of what you say. You got to tell what Jesus said. Of him shall the son of man be ashamed. Jesus will be ashamed of you. Wait. When he comes in the glory of his father with his own holy age, he's going to be ashamed of you. Praise God. All right, let's go back to Luke 6. Go back to Luke 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. If I behold the boy, your brother, I, but proceed not to beam in your own eye, you got to beam your eye, you ain't perfect. Now get that beam out of your eye so you can be. All right. You know, what is a beam? That means you got seen. You, you need to be correct. You try to correct somebody else. All right. Neither canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me put a mole out of thine eye, when thou thyself behold not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite. First cast the beam out of, first you cast thou first the beam out of thine own eye, then shall thou see clearly put a mole out of thy brother's eye. For a good tree bring it not for corrupt fruit, we have verse 43. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns, men do not gather thee, nor brown, but do they gather great. A good man out of good tree in his heart bringing forth that which is good. Sin ain't good, is it? A evil man out of evil tree in his heart bringing forth that which is evil. He bring forth sin. For out of the bundle of the heart, the mouth speaking. Then if you go to the 15th chapter of Matthew, it lets you know that the sin defile a man. And Jesus named the things that's come out of your heart. Matthew 15 chapter. 46. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I said? You say you accept Christ, your personal Savior, but you don't do what he say do. Whosoever cometh to me and hear my saying and do it them, you got to do what he told you to do. I will show you whom he is like. You got to do what he told you to do. That what you got to do. How you accept Christ, you'll save it. You don't do what he told you to do. How is that possible? You've been deceived. You didn't accept Christ, you'll say. The blind, your blind leader tell you where you won't be saved. You ain't got to do it. Come and somebody believe your heart. The same 10th chapter of Romans, go back to verse 1. The prayer to Israel is that they may be saved, for they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Confess with them out the Lord Jesus, you got to put down Moses. You can't say you got to keep the law of Moses to be saved. You got to denounce that. You got to put that aside. That have passed. You got to put that aside. 
You can't say you got to bring tithes and offering as you go uh, if you won't be saved. You got to keep Sabbath day, first fruit offering. If you won't be saved, come to the priest. If you won't be saved, you can't say that. Or else you ain't confessing Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus said, I have mercy, not sacrifice. Did he say so? When they condemn him for trying to condemn for he was sinless. He said, now you go learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You ain't bringing me no sacrifice. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You got to repent. Turn from your sin. Uh, all right. Mark 2.17. Uh, praise God. Luke 24, 46. Uh -huh. Jesus, you said, enjoy hearing over one sin that repent. That 99 just that need no repent. Uh -huh. All right. Mm -hmm. You got Jesus, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. All right. Mm hmm. But I, I confess about me. You don't confess with your mouth. You say you got to keep the law be saved. You say you got you to be tied to law. You ain't confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth. You say you got to obey the law most. All this is a 10th chapter wrong. Begin with first verse. Uh huh. Salve ain't nobody else but Jesus. And believe in that heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe God, believe he's alive. But with the heart, man, believe unto right. Believe he will make you righteous. Believe he will take away your sin. Matthew 26, 26, 27, 28. And keep on reading. This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. No, he said New Testament. <clears throat> your tithes and offering, all that kind of thing, never took away your sin. Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrew chapter 7, 8, 9, 6, 5, 4. My God today. How you accept Christ is saved, but you don't do what he said do. Praise God. Jesus told the man that was, that was at the pool, go and sin no more, lest some greater thing come to thee. You go sin no more. You got to do it like the Bible said. Praise God. Praise God. We were talking with the family <clears throat> this Thanksgiving. And they always ask us questions. And say, well, when Jesus said it finished, what did that mean? What do that mean? That's what they had. That means he, he, he did what he came here to do. So it says, if Jesus died for you, see it, you ain't got to do nothing. The Bible don't say that. And we ask, do you believe the scripture? The scripture don't say you ain't got to do nothing. You got to repent. You got to believe. You got to call on him to save you. Uh-huh. You got to do that. Praise God. He, he, he's the only way. You can't say Jesus and the law. Jesus and tithe. Jesus and offering. Matter of fact, in Galatians 2, you, you preach that. Also, Gal, uh, Act 15, chapter, I believe it is. You preach that. Also, Galatians 5. You preach that. The, the scripture said, the scripture let me know you are sinner. You fallen from grace. Christ becoming no effect to you. You are a Pharisee. You are a hypocrite. You got to say Christ is of the law, and the law is no longer required. It is only through Jesus, for there is no other name. And Jesus is the Son of God. You can't come to a lot of you are yeah, ignorant. I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remembrance saying, No, you were not, because you don't believe Jesus Christ is alive. You don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You still in your sin. 
You you got to turn for your sin. Repent of your sin. Jesus said, not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall, shall enter into the kingdom, but he had do the will of my father. And he said, in that day, that's the same chapter of Matthew, in that day, many going to say, Lord, we did this. And did we do this in your day? And did we do this? <coughs> he going to say, depart me, you that work iniquity. Iniquity is sin. You never repent. I want to be saved. You don't know what being saved means. The rich young ruler came with Jesus. And that's in the book of in the book of Luke, I believe it's the 18th or 19th chapter. The book of Luke. If, if the false prophet don't hear that, correct me. Fact check for me that for me, false prophet. Luke 18 or pray God. Luke 19, one of when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, say, "What thing must I do that I might have him eternal life?" Jesus told that boy. Do you know the command? Oh, you got to keep God's commandment. You can't be breaking God's commandment. You won't be saved. Yeah. Then he told go sell what you have and give to the poor. And come and follow me, that young man, Will Way Saul. <clears throat> uh-huh. You got to do everything Jesus told you to do. Uh -huh. Jesus told that woman, go sit no more. Hallelujah. Jesus said, he that followed me shall not walk in darkness. Darkness is sin. Let, let you get that. Let you get that. I think I want the eight chapter of John. Praise it. Praise it. You got to do everything to you so you do. I think that's why I want eight tablets, y'all. A lip. She said, No, man, Lord. Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus said, Go sin no more. Look at look, look, what Jesus said. Verse 12, 8 and 12, John 8 12. Jesus made Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness. You ain't going to walk in darkness, Father of Jesus. Jesus said, if any man come out, be let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In John 3 and 20, Jesus said, they want to do it evil, hate the light, need to come into the light. You do it evil, you hate the light. Lest the deed should be approved. Well, we are under grace now. All right, Romans 6, 15, shall we sin because we are under grace, not under the law, God forbid. Romans 6, 1, shall we continue to say that great meal about God forbid. John 8, 8 chapter, start with 31. Did I you by the sight indeed if you continue in my word? How how I how you accept Christ your Savior, but you don't believe his word. Wait a minute, but you don't obey his word. How you how is that? You better appear your sin for it ever last too late. Repent, or you won't be saved. Being saved means following him, obeying him, doing what he told you to do. His blood for the remission of your sin. Being born of water in spirit. The Holy Ghost, the spirit don't tell you. The new birth, the new nature, being born again, don't tell you to sin. Satan will tell you to sin. That's the third chapter of 1 John. He that commits sin is of the devil. The eighth chapter of John, Jesus said, uh, 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 he that commits sin is a servant of sin. That means you do what sin tell you to do. But he was son said free and free indeed. You free from being a servant of sin. You don't have to serve sin. You free. You serve Christ now. You don't serve your father the devil now. You serve Christ now. How are you? I said Christ is saying you, yet you don't do nothing he say do. And you speak against what he say do. All right. I get we leave right there. Praise God. You don't want to go to hell. You won't be saved. For real. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's leave right there. God bless you. Thank you for everything.